Hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is Corey, better known as the C-Man, and I want to welcome you to another edition of the C-Man's Cinema Sit-Down. I, I got to tell you, man, these two-minute reviews, they're exhausting. Uh, because you know me, I talk, and I got so much to say, especially about movies I love, like this one. Uh, to get it down to two minutes, it's so hard. It really racks my brain and, and tests my patience and, and my skills. But I think it also gets me prepped. For the real non-spoiler review, man, when I can finally sit back and enjoy talking about this film and not fly through it and just get all the things that we need to hit. Um, and there is so much to talk about with this one. I was, ugh. Like I said in my two-minute review, which if you haven't seen, make sure you check that out right here. Um, I, I said that it felt so good to be so right about this movie. Um, you know, it's one of these elements of this film made me a little worried that it might not hit. And then when it hit, and it hit. And it hit, and it hit, and it hit. I was so freaking excited and happy in the theater. I, I was beaming, smiling, ear to ear, man. This movie is a lot of fun, a lot to get into. So why don't we pull up a chair, take a seat. We're getting ready to dive in, just spoiler free, into Shazam. And oh, man, I tell you, this, like I said, this movie's a lot of fun. The action is big. Um, the action is funny. It, it, it's humorous. It's scary. Um, you know, uh, David F. Sandberg uh, and, and uh, the uh, writer uh, here, Henry Gaiden, they did some awesome stuff with this movie. Um, it starts w with our leads. Uh, like I said in my two minute review, uh, you know, Zach Levi is the face. We, we see him everywhere. He's on all the posters. He is Shazam. Um, but it's a two character street, man. You need two guys to get through this movie. You need two guys to pull this movie and the story off. Um, and Asher Angel is just as good as Zachary Levi is, man. Um, their performance combined together just creates an all-around singular performance that's really stellar to watch. Um, I love watching Asher play Billy Batson. Um, you know, he, he really gets that, that loner feel that Billy has when he enters this movie as his kid's kind of been bounced around foster home to foster home. Um, you know, as he's trying to look for his real-life mom, he gets kind of lost from her and separated. Um, and, and he carries all that stuff and that weight of all that on him. Um, but at the same time, Time, you know, he, he kind of wants to be alone, but being involved in the foster group home that he gets put in with this kind of family that just he inherits almost, he, he he can't get away from them. You know, they constantly keep finding a way to get into his life or popping up in places that make him question things. Um, and, and then he ultimately just can't let anything bad happen to him. Uh, you know, we've seen it in the trailer when Freddy gets knocked down and starts getting beat up by those two, you know, bullies. Asher gets in there as Billy Batson and, and breaks some faces, you know, and that kind of leads him to becoming Shazam. And I just, I really enjoyed Asher Angel's performance. So he gets the teen angst bit. He gets the sorry for myself bit right so much that when he becomes a superhero, um, you know, it's so well handed off to Zach Levi that what Angel has done has created a performance and, and a story that, that Levi is able to take and say, all right, I'm going to apply this to my performance. So I feel... Like, I'm that kid in a superhero's body. Um, and the way Billy is immature at the beginning of being a superhero, you know. And once you get past the fun stuff, it's like, oh, look at me show off. And, you know, we've seen it in the trailers where, like, he blows up a guy's phone. And he is responsible for that bus kind of starting to get derailed. All of that stuff just plays so well because of what Asher Angel establishes as Billy Batson. So that, like I said, when Zach Levi picks it up and becomes Shazam... He can apply this stuff and make you believe that he's still Billy Batson. Um, he makes you believe that he's a 15-year-old kid trapped inside of this adult body. Um, you know, that concept of big that is kind of applied here um, and utilized in some ways to the point where there is a, a tip of the hat little moment for big where you're like, oh my gosh, that's and that's so what's going on with this movie. And you can you can see where, where you know, Zach Levi definitely, you know, like any of us that have seen the movie, have, you know, impressionable moments watching Tom Hanks do it. He's able to apply the same things. I mean, he's able to capture the essence and the joy and the wonder of a kid. Um, you know, when he is in superhero form, he realizes what's going on. His face, just watch his face the whole movie, man. When he realizes he can shoot lightning out of his hands or that he's super strong or, or that when he finally can fly, every time he discovers something, the just pure joy and excitement and wonder in Zach Levi's face is mind-blowing. I, I said this would be something that he could do. He did even better than I thought he could do it. Um, and then when he finally is in, you know, action mode and hero mode and he's having to, you know, take on Dr. Savannah or save the day by the end of the movie, um, the growth that happens both with Asher's Billy and Zach's Shazam, it happens in tandem to the point where 
everything is finally on the line and, and Billy has no choice. He has to become the hero. And that moment is so, so, so awesome, man. Like they built it so perfectly that when you get to this moment and you might be able to figure it out what the moment is going to be uh, based on what we've seen in the trailers. But when you get to that final moment where it's like, it's time to be the hero and he yells Shazam and be, that this time when he becomes Shazam, he feels like a hero. He knows what it is. He, he you watch Asher Angel become an adult in the movie, and that happens to Billy, which then applies to Zach Levi's performance as Shazam. And when the final act hits, you're just like, "Wow, man! Look, look at how much he's changed um, just by what he's learned because of what's been thrown at him." Um, and, and a lot of that has to do with having a really great bad guy. And I think Henry Gaiden wrote this so well. Yes, we twisted and tweaked the story of Dr. Savannah. He doesn't really have any power sets outside of a magical eye that allows him to see magic. That's how he's able to spot Shazam and figure stuff out. Now, they tweaked that a little bit um, to, to give him a power set because they, they didn't have Black Adam at their disposal yet, I guess. Um, and there are elements from the new 52 Shazam all over this movie. The comic accurate moments, man, like when Billy gets on the train and going to the wizard's lair. Um, to, to the looks of some of the characters and things. To, you know, even when you get that punch moment when it's supposed to be Black Adam and it's Dr. Savannah. How they tweaked his character, it works. Um, I thought it was a really creative take that allowed Sandberg and Henry Gaiden to utilize some other villains that have shown up in Shazam before. Um, you know, that, you know, with the, the Seven Deadly Sins, where they're not, you know, part of Savannah's skill set, but there was once a storyline where they kind of crossed paths, and by doing what they do, it allows you to utilize two sets of villains um, that are from the Shazam universe as one, and it works really, really well. Because of who's behind the camera. Um, David F. Sandberg, coming from a horror background, is able to take the seven deadly sins um, and really make them terrifying. And they are scary monsters. And they're very comic accurate looking, a bunch of them. Uh, you see them and you're like, oh man, that's what they look like in the comics. Um, but it is a terrifyingly realistic way that adding that kind of makes Savannah bigger and more dangerous and more scary. And when you work in his origin story right at the beginning of the movie, uh, we kick off and you're like, well, this isn't Billy Batson. What's going on here? And then you hear Thaddeus and you're like, oh, we're starting with Savannah. And getting his backstory again allows you to understand where he's coming from, even though you completely disagree with the way in which he's gotten to that place in life. Um, and Mark Strong is just so good at being bad. Um, and having a real big bad that's, that's tough for Shazam, he's the perfect first villain for him to face um, because... He, he matches him, you know, power set-wise and things that happen in his origin that kind of lead him as the perfect big bad just works really well. Um, and when we get down to this last fight, it, it tests Shazam fully um, to the point where we get a moment that I almost burst into hysterics because I didn't think there was any way we were going to see this moment. And then this moment happens. And you're like, oh. And it's also like the perfect culmination to the film and everything that, that Billy and Shazam have learned and... Uh, to take on Savannah in that way, it's so cool. And it just, it, it, the two of them having similar skill sets um, allow some really awesome stuff on screen and really big, fun action sequences. Um, but, you know, there's a lot more than just these three in the movie. And Jack Dylan Grazer, uh, who kind of has taken on the superhero nerddom from Billy Batson, totally am okay with that too, um, because it gives Freddy the perfect spot to kind of allowed Jack Dylan Grazer to shine on screen with both Asher Angel and uh, with Zach Levi. And him being that hero nerd and having all of the, the gear and all of the t-shirts and knowing what it's like to, to be a superhero, it's so fun to watch him and Asher Angel work at the beginning uh, and trying to learn how to control the powers, how to do the powers. And then when Zach Levi is in the Shazam, um, it's so much fun to watch them. Uh, you know, here's hero test whatever, and we're testing flight. And is this really a test of invisibility or a secret test to find out if you're fireproof? <laughs> There's so many awesome elements. And, and the bond and the chemistry that, he, that you know, Grazer has with Angel and Levi shines in the whole movie, man, and really just creates this triumphant if you will uh that when things start going bad you're like oh no oh no oh no um and, and the way freddie is able to kind of be the center to get everybody back to the middle and, and help lead billy and shazam back to where they got to get to uh they're just really emotional moments they're really touching moments um there are a lot of family moments a lot of moments that pull on the heartstrings and the foster family in the movie is spec 
spectacular. You've got Grace Fulton playing Mary Bromfield. You've got Ian Chen as Eugene Choi. you got uh, Faith Herman as Darla Dudley. Uh, and then Jovan Armand as pa Pedro Pena. Uh, kind of route out the Foster family. And, and I like the way that they're utilized. I like the Foster family storyline that's in this movie. Uh, coming from a family who, who took foster uh, babies and did infant foster care for years. And then eventually adopted my little sister. Um, knowing how that system works. Getting to see that stuff on screen. I was like, oh my gosh. One from someone who's not a foster kid. This is important because it's a story that I can connect to. It's going to be such an important movie for foster kids. And I think they handle all that stuff really well and kind of get into the psyche of what it's like to be a foster kid and how this group kind of rally around each other all the time. Um, and that's what kind of helps Billy grow. And the way they utilize them in the story, and like I said, that 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 thing they give them at the end is just awesome. Um, and, and the performances are really good. You know, I really enjoyed. Um, you know, Grace Fulton. Um, you know, she pops in a few times as Mary and th hits the mark where where she's asked to. Uh, Ian Chen. Uh, also, same thing as Eugene. Small moments, but they're just wonderful. Um, as is the same with Jovan Armand. Uh, you know, Pedro's. Pops in here and there, has very little say, but when he does, uh, you know, there are moments that you're just like, oh, and everybody uh, in the family gets a moment. But the biggest moments belong to Faith Herman, who plays Darla Dudley. Oh, she is the cutest little girl in the world. She's so stinking adorable. And, and the, the moments they give her, you're just like, oh, man, that's so good. And she just so badly wants to be a good little sister. It's wonderful. Um, and I love that mixture uh, of elements and the, the, how they all work so well into what is the Shazam storyline and how that helps him grow as a character. Um, I, I just thought that, that it was just well, well written from uh, Henry Gaiden. And, and like I said, David Sandberg, he, he applies his horror elements to get some dark moments in here that work really well, but he, he does a really good job of balancing that stuff with the fun and the adventure and the action. And all the superhero action and fun works. The special effects are really cool in this movie. Um, I love how they use Shazam. Uh, and, and the way Billy changes, or how Shazam changes back to Billy. They utilize it in more than just, oh, like I say Shazam and I change. It's part of the skill set, and it works really well. It creates fun, awesome moments in the action sequences. And, and all around, man, um, you, you know, this movie just, just functions so well. And then the set pieces, uh, I still cannot get over how amazing the wizard lair is. The, the wizard's cave is so freaking cool. And Jaiman Hansu just does a bang-up job as the wizard, man. He's powerful, he's scary, but at the same time, he's old and weak. Um, and every time he's on screen, I'm just like, I'm buying what you're doing, Jaiman. Uh, and if I was a kid, I would be scared. And I like the, the, his story, like how he passes off and it finally lands on Billy. I thought that stuff was really cool. And how that plays into you know the, the seven deadly sins and some of the other things that are comic elements and accurate little easter eggs that are dropped all over this movie's got so many um and, and so many times you'll be like oh wow that was a, such a cool way to use that comic moment or oh that was a cool way to do that or then you know there's a the big one that i keep talking about when that happened i was just like oh, i did not think they were gonna go there like that's Deep cuts, man. And there's a bunch of deep cut stuff in the movie that just works really well that comic fans are going to be really pumped about. And then, you know, you get your your, your comic book movie post credit scenes. And, and the first one, real big one into whatever the future of Shazam is. Um, but the last one, uh, it, it's just the humor in this movie is so good. And the movie, even though it doesn't break the fourth wall, this movie is self-aware of things that are going on in the world. In the world of DC movies, uh, there's some jokes with Superman and Batman that I think work really well. And then this last one, man kind of mentioned something that, like, not a lot of people, I think, were thinking about, and then it happened, and it's like, well, I mean, is it really that cool? Um, it is, uh, you just sat there, and you're like, wow, like, this movie is so meta, um, and so self-aware of itself, without ever breaking that fourth wall and letting on that, oh, yeah, it's a movie. There's just moments where you're like, wow, that was really clever, that was really smart, that was really funny, and, and, and all that mixed in with the comic accurate stuff, this is a movie, I'm telling you, comic book fans are going to love, but I think regular audiences are going to just flock to. Uh, it's so relatable. Um, it, it's the thing that every kid experiences when they dress up as a superhero, only it's really happening on a big screen. And I think kids are going to love this movie. I, I do warn you, though, that Seven Deadly Sin stuff is terrifying. Like, it is, like, conjuring. You know, uh, Sandberg obviously did uh, Annabelle Creation it's in that realm, man, of scary-looking creatures, and I, be forewarned, but I think this kid, this movie totally works for kids. Um, I think kids are going to enjoy this. I think adults are going to enjoy this. I just think people are going to enjoy this. This is another big win for DC, which makes a very, very happy C-Man. So, there you go, man. 
all of my non-spoiler thoughts out on the table. Didn't have to do it in two minutes. Got to take your time. It was really enjoyable. I had a lot of fun uh, talking about this movie because this movie is just a lot of fun to go see. So I hope you'll go see it. Um, but if you have already, um, you know, hit those comments down below if you also got to catch an early access screening. Or if, if now that you, you know, you're watching this now after you've seen the movie and you've seen the movie, let me know all your thoughts down below, man. What worked? What didn't work? Um, were you excited about this one? Did it, did it meet your expectations? Uh, did it make you happy? Did it make you sad? Did it, did it make you laugh? Did it make you cry? Did it make you scared? Um, let me know everything that this movie was doing for you if you saw it down below. If you haven't, as a C-Man enticed you with his full review, I hope so. I hope you go check this out. Um, but let me know what you're looking forward to or why you don't want to go see this movie down below. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you're new here and you want to join the Cinema Sit Down Squad and, and get a taste of everything we're doing, Hit that subscribe button and then the little bell so you get alerts every time I make a new video. But see, man, it's cinema. Sit down on the see, man. Now I'm sounding off. Peace. Well, well. If you aren't still here, looking for something else to check out that's C-Man related, why don't you check out a video like this guy or this guy? And if you really want to help the C-Man out in year two, hit that subscribe button and come join the cinema. Sit down, squad, kids. You know what to do. See ya.